look at a different couple of different types of walkers. Um, this is your just standard collapsible walker. So with this walk walker, um, there are no wheels. It's going to allow for a slower gait pattern. Um, it's more stable than a rolling walker. Um, so initially, when we're first working with a patient with a walker, this is what we're going to use. Once again, you want this height to be hit at about the greater trochanter or the ulnar styloid process, and you want the elbow to flex about 20 degrees, okay? So this is a standard walker. Like I said, it collapses. So you just push that button in, and then you can put that in the back of the car in order to do that. Okay, this is a two-wheel rolling walker. Uh, this one has the tennis balls in it. You can also get those that have a little slide on the back too, so that they're not, it's not constantly, um, if somebody has carpeting at home, it's not making indents in the carpet and all that kind of stuff. Plus they can be kind of noisy. Um, so with this one, this is usually a progression of a standard walker. And the reason why you have a progression of it is so that they can have a more normalized gait pattern. With a standard walker, when they're walking, they have to advance the walker, step, step, advance the walker, step, step. And so it really slows that patient down. So once they are a little bit more coordinated with a, a walker and they, their balance um, allows them to go to a rolling walker, then we wanna advance them so that they can have a normalized gait pattern, okay? This is a rollator. I call them the Cadillac of uh, rolling walkers. Uh, the wheels are usually a little bit big, bigger and in fact they can be a lot bigger than this. Okay, I think these are probably like, um, oh, I don't know, three, four inch diameter. They can make them, they can be really big and have um, some tread on them too if they want to go outside. The good thing about rollators is that they do have the bench. They can put items inside the bench so that they can carry it around the house. Um, sometimes I'll have patients, you know, put their plate from the kitchen on this and then they can carry it to um, the uh, living room. Uh, they can also sit. Now, when you lock these rollators, you got to push down, okay? And then the patient can turn around and sit. So if they're, you know, at the dryer and they want to fold clothes, they can do it in a sitting position. Or if they get tired, they walk 25 um, feet and they're short of breath, they can turn around and sit and relax for a period of time, okay? And then when they get up, they gotta push up, turn around, and in order to unlock, they pull up, okay? I, I get these for my patients all the time. They're, they're really nice to have, okay? This is a reverse pediatric walker, okay? So the patient actually, um, this area of the walker is behind them, and they're standing up like that in order to um, use this walker. Um, and this is called a hemi walker, okay? Hemi walkers are used for patients that have a non-functioning um, upper extremity, and so somebody who's had a stroke. And so with the hemi walker, they're gonna be out to the side. They may have an injured leg on this side, or a, a, a limited leg on this side, and they would ambulate like that. So it would be forward like that. Okay, that's a hemi walker. Okay, now we looked at the parallel bars earlier. Um, for the parallel bars, they don't have to advance anything. You don't need hardly any coordination to use a parallel bar. And it's the most stable assisted device because nothing moves, okay? From the parallel bars, the walker, um, is more stable because it's only, first of all, it's only one item to, to move. So you, you can have less coordination um, with a walker and it's pretty stable assisted device, okay? Um, we're gonna go to crutches next. You have to have decent balance for crutches. Yes, we use crutches for those patients that have de decreased balance but if they have bad coordination problems or their balance is just horrendous, then you don't wanna give them crutches. You wanna um, have them 
use a walker in that case. Okay, so let me go back to this walker real quick. In order to adjust the walker, all you do is turn it upside down, push the um, little button in, and you can raise it or lower it in that instance, okay? And believe me, you're gonna adjust a lot of walkers, okay? You know, a lot of patients will go out and buy their own walker or they'll get a walker issued from the doctor and, um, you know, it's just not their forte to um, adjust a walker. So you may, you may see a lot of walkers that are too high and too low for a patient and it makes a huge difference. If it's too low, they're gonna have posture problems. They're gonna be leaning over in that walker and that's never good. And if it's too high, then they don't really get the stability that they need either. So, um, you know, we're the kind of assisted device Nazis for that matter. And so you're gonna be adjusting quite a bit. Okay, so crutches, um, same thing. In order to adjust them, there's a little button down here that you push in in order to make it um, higher or lower. Um, they all come with like heights, like five, nine, five, you know, whatever their height is. Please don't go by that, okay? It's usually wrong. Um, it gives you an idea, like if they say I'm five, six, you can kind of put it in that area, but usually you're still gonna have to adjust it. So do not go by the, um, the heights on the, um, assisted device, use your training. You can also adjust the hand rim, okay? And I do this quite a bit too. You want 20 degrees of elbow flexion on the hand rim. Let me go back in order to adjust this. Okay, so when you're adjusting crutches, you wanna go out about four to six inches to the side of the foot, okay? You want their elbow, once again, you want it at about the elder styloid process with about 20 degrees of elbow flexion, okay? There should be two finger widths underneath the axillary part of the crutches. People should never be leaning on crutches like that. What's underneath that arm? Your brachial plexus, right? So if they're leaning on that in order to use their crutches, they are doing it completely wrong. And they could damage that brachial plexus and really cause a lot of problems. And they'll know, if they're doing it that way, after about 20 minutes of doing it, they're gonna realize that I'm doing something wrong, okay? Their hands will go numb and everything else. So the only thing, the only thing that they're doing underneath their arm is just squeezing it, okay? So all of their weight should be pushed through their hands when they're using a crutch, okay? not leaning, all right? You really, you have to teach those patients to, to do that. Okay, so once again, you need some coordination and some balance to use these axillary crutches. And you'll see all kinds of different types of axillary crutches. Some of them, the more, um, the newer kinds will just have like a straight axillary and then they have one side versus both sides. They're a little bit more expensive, so, um, you know, you have to consider that too. Insurance doesn't want to pay for the real expensive um, axillary crutches, so they may have to be paying for those themselves. These are called forearm crutches or loft strand crutches, okay? So we issue this to patients who are gonna be on crutches for a long period of time. Um, patients that have cerebral palsy and they may always need crutches, may be using loft strand crutches or somebody has to be on crutches for three months for some non-weight bearing issue on their leg. This may be a better crutch to use. They're easy to get on and off. Um, they're usually lighter in weight and they, they're not gonna hurt your brachial plexus either, okay? So you, once again, it's the same thing, four to six inches out to the side. You want about 20 degrees of elbow flexion with this and um, it should, it should hit, well, never mind. I'm not even gonna try. It should hit about your greater trachea for your hand too. So you can adjust it here, and then you can adjust the height overall here as well, okay? These are great crutches. I don't know why loft strand isn't used more often than, it, than they are. Um, I would say the only thing is with an axillary crutch, it goes up a little bit higher so it offers a little bit more um, stability than loft strand. 
But if somebody's going to be on it a long period of time, they learn to use these pretty quickly. Okay. Um, okay, now we're going to go to canes. These are called quad canes. Oh, let me back up. You are going to see a lot of the um, little scooters for like if they have an ankle injury, they'll they'll have the little knee scooters now. I don't want to, I don't have one in the clinic yet. Um, the good thing about knee scooters is that they are quick. You can go pretty fast with those things. Um, the bad thing about it is, you know, any type of stairs or any type of curbs, it's a little bit more cumbersome. Um, so you have to consider that too, whether you get them a knee scooter or crutches. They can't go up and down stairs. Crutches you can, so keep that in mind. Okay, so quad canes. This is a wide base quad cane, and this is a small base quad cane. Okay, this is also called an off shaft cane. Okay, because it it it's off the shaft. Well, speaks to it for itself. Okay. Um, personally, I'm not crazy about quad canes. I'm really not. I, I find that patients. Um, I don't think they offer that much more stability than just a regular straight line cane. And I find that people get their toe caught and everything else with them. So I'm not crazy about quad canes. Some people really want them. And what I do is if they say, well, I really think I need one of those quad canes. I'll take a quad cane now and I'll take a straight line cane and we'll practice with both. And usually very quickly they're like, yeah, I'd rather just have that straight line cane. So that's usually what happens. Now, you can see on this quad cane, they extend out at about a 45 degree angle, and this one is straighter. You want the one that's, that's out in that 45 degree angle to be on the outside. And so if it's not, all you do is push in that button. I'm sorry, I did that wrong. Uh, push in that button and it will turn around and lock. If I can find it. Okay, so you can change it from side to side. I don't know if I did that right or not. I might have went all the way around. Okay, there I did it. Okay, so you can change it from side to side depending on what side that they're gonna use it on. Okay, um, remember for um, a cane or one crutch, you always wanna use the cane or one crutch on the opposite side of the injured leg. That's where it provides um, the most support. Okay, so think about that. You want to widen your base of support, okay? So if this was my injured leg, I'm not widening my base of support, okay? So as I use that, if I use it on the same side, I'm really not providing any support. So that's why if this is my injured leg, I'm really putting all my weight on this side and taking weight off my injured leg, okay? So you always want to use cane or one crutch on the opposite side of the injured leg. And I did that wrong because that should have been flipped around. Okay. Um, these are both straight line canes. This is called a J cane because it looks like a J cane. Okay. And um, this is just, you know, a little fancier of a cane. They do have wooden canes too. The only thing with wooden canes is the patient has to cut it. And once they cut it, that's it. That's the length. So, um, you know, you want to make sure you do it right the first time. These are relatively cheap and you can raise and lower it um, to whatever height you need. And once again, the height should be about four to six inches. You want about 20 degrees of elbow flexion in order to do that. Especially with walkers, well, even, even um, crutches. You really want a good adjustment. You want to make sure that it fits that patient. One little click can make a huge difference on how that patient is getting around. So if you see them struggling and they're really exhausted and they're sweating just walking 20, 30 feet, adjust the walker or adjust the, the um, uh, axillary crutches and it can make a world of difference. Okay. Um, okay. Let me turn this over. 